All right, let's do this. Hello, YouTube. This is Ray, and I am here to help you with some Baldur's Gate 3 updates if you are a Mac user. Now, if you've played Baldur's Gate 3 on a Mac, you've come to realize that the patches come very slow for the Mac, mainly because this is a porting job done by Larian, which was initially done by a third party company. But now it seems like they're bringing that in house and the process is just very delayed. What this means is that for multiplayer and cross saves, it becomes an absolute nightmare playing Baldur's Gate 3 because of the incompatibility process. I I think that there are two ways to get by this that will help you and you'll always be updated on the Mac with updated on your Mac being a very big emphasis here. So let's get with the best ways to stay updated with Baldur's Gate 3 on the Mac. So the first option with staying updated on the Mac and playing Baldur's Gate 3 is the obvious. I've played it personally on my playthrough so you can see how the graphical qualities are, see how the connection is. I have a fairly decent internet connection with the exception of probably the last couple of weeks. But if you have a decent enough internet connection and the emphasis is really on ping level, if you can get a ping level of like lower than 30 and somewhere ranging around 50 to 75 megabits download, you're pretty much golden. You can play this on a cloud gaming platform like GeForce Now. I know it's a paid service, but I highly recommend that over just buying a whole gaming PC because it is basically a gaming PC in the cloud. It's perfect, especially if you travel. I do quite a bit of traveling, so this actually worked out very well for me when I am just away. Now, if you're actually hesitant on cloud gaming, there is another option. There's an option where you can actually play Baldur's Gate 3 Windows version on your Mac. I highly recommend this only for M series Macs for specific reasons I will explain. So the second way to play this game on your Mac, which I actually prefer over playing the native port of the Mac, what this does is that it ports the Windows version to run on your Mac. It's basically the job Larian's Mac team was doing, but done on a higher level and more generically. That means that this porting job is not going to be perfect. There's going to be some things that actually go wrong. I think one of the things that has a problem with this is cloud saving and it only because it freezes for a little bit. But other than that, the game runs even better on this than the actual Mac port. So there's two ways we can port Baldur's Gate 3 on their Mac. They're basically the same thing, but one's a paid version, which offers a little more bells and whistles and more functionality. The other one requires a bit more handle. I recommend actually just going with the paid version, get it out the way. I believe it's $74 a year or $494 if you want lifetime upgrades. And this is an app called Crossover by Code Weaver. Like I mentioned, this app does most of the handholding in regards to installing Steam, which in turn will allow you to install Baldur's Gate 3 windows version so you'll always be patch updated with very little difference but better quality overall which is pretty amazing i'll show you a bit of footage at the end of this video the other version is how crossweaver actually works but they just added some extra ui and bells and whistles it's a project called wine and if you go to winehq.org you'll read about how this is basically a compatibility layer that allows you to run Windows programs on your Mac by being basically a porting tool. Now it's 100% possible to go with this version. This is the free version. I just re recommend the paid version because this does require a bit more handholding, but it's not too complicated. For this video for now, I'm going to go over the crossover version so we can get up and running really quickly. So if you're Mac user, once you have crossover installed, you'll have a window like this. Um, don't mind the bottle that's there currently. That's how I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3 right now. I will explain what a bo bottle is once we do the installation process. So you just click install. Steam will most likely be one of the options you can just literally click steam you can read some of the details they might vary mainly because i already have something installed mainly this second line but other than that all you have to do is click install matter of fact for this video i'm going to create a new bottle so you can see exactly what everything looks like so you don't have to click edit but i will 
um, to click new bottle. You will want it to be Windows 10 64 bit. You can name the bottle anything you want. I just named it gaming because Steam is just a generalized version of gaming. I'll name the bottle for video. Oops click install it'll download everything that it needs to download and install whenever it gets the chance to and i'll just fast forward all this just click yes for everything then you go through the steam setup And there you go. And then Steam is installed. Um, I am going to switch to my version of Steam, mainly because I already have everything installed. I'm already logged in. So what you would do is just log into Steam and just do everything normally. You'll get to your normal Steam homepage. What I would recommend is quitting Steam. And then there's a few settings that you need to set in this advanced settings. The settings that are very important for Baldur's Gate 3 you want to make sure you have D3D Metal on. This is basically the game porting toolkit that Apple has provided for developers, which handles a majority of the porting via a version of DirectX 11 or 10. It's one of them too. The other one that you want to have clicked is M-Sync. It'll ask it to reboot, that is perfectly fine. And then just for quality sake, I highly recommend going to high resolution mode. What this does is it actually makes Steam look a lot better instead of looking a bit pixelated. So enabled high resolution mode. Okay. Now usually you don't have to click anything here, but there is one more thing I do recommend you doing. I recommend you clicking wine configuration. This should open a window. I would go to graphics. Now, I think by default, it's already set to 192 for me, but make sure you set your DPI to 192. That seems to be the most accurate version of the dots per inch, but this is really based off my screen. So if you find that a better dot per inch works for you, then by all means, go ahead with that. But I recommend 192. This will make Steam look really good. Now with all of that set up, I'm gonna just go to mine because it's the same thing. We'll wait for Steam to open up. And as you can see, Steam open up pretty much normally as possible. It does take a little bit more time, but that is okay. That is just the product of high resolution kind of try, trying to compile and render all these things. But then you just go about your normal business and you go to your library and you can just go to Baldur's Gate 3 and install it and run the game and things would work fairly well. I'm going to show you how it runs for me in a couple of seconds, but there is something that I need to set up for that. And since I'm not that far in this game, I had a friend give me a save file and this is Baldur's Gate 3 in Act 3. I really wanted to see what it looked like in Act 3 with the performance. The biggest thing about playing this using a port of course, it's not going to be as performant, but at the same time, it's able to run fairly well. And I think this is set on FSR 2.2, which is vastly better than 1.0, which is what MacBooks are stuck with. And it runs fairly decent, even for Act 3. Let's let's actually try this out. So I'm run currently running FSR 1 at quality. I think the only other difference is anti-aliasing. I usually have that on. And this is basically what my game looks like currently. Probably a little sharper, but for the most part, it looks pretty much like that. But luckily, since this is the Windows version, it would have FSR 2.2, which means that you can actually get better quality uh, even in performance mode. I think performance mode looks even better than, see, yeah, it looks even better performance mode of FSR 2.2 than quality in 1.0 and the fps is relatively the same in a pretty dense crowd where a whole bunch is happening we have Baldur's gate 3 running the windows version using d3d metal on the mac and everything looks pretty good i recommend is actually playing this using crossover if you want me to show you how to do the free version of this i will make a video for it if I get enough requests. If not, then this works pretty well. But the other option is cloud gaming and it's relatively the same price for the year. I recommend the cloud gaming first, 
If you want to run this on your machine manually, you can do the crossover version. I'm going to play the crossover version for a little while, but most likely I will play this on cloud gaming because it just works out so much better for me. But I do want to caveat that this is most likely possible because of metal, which means you will need an M series Mac in order to do this. You're also going to need the 16 gig or above version because I can see the memory well above 13. Eight gigabytes is not going to work for this. If you wanna watch the performance of this, watch my next couple of playthroughs of my Let's Play. But if you found this video helpful, smash that like button, hit that follow or subscribe button, whatever it is, do all the YouTube things. And if you need more help with your setup, just hit me in the comments. I will respond when I get the chance. Um, and hopefully everything works out for you as well. All right.